Now, quite recently, we filmed you doing a conversion. Um, what did you convert into what? Well, I wanted to make a figure of the period of the Indian Mutiny in 1857. And I was able to obtain a print which shows the uniform and the equipment that was worn at that particular period. Yes. And in order to make it, decided that the figure of the 95th Rifleman, which we've already seen, was very suitable. Mm -hmm. So we used the basic kit, which we can see. Yes. Plus some items from the scrap box. We've got a, a musket, a pair of arms, some gift wrapping ribbon, and a scrap of paper. And from these, with some adhesive, we arrived at this figure. We commenced by joining the two legs together. So these have to be separated from the sprue. Trim off the flash. And because these have got little spats on, which aren't necessary for the 1857 period, we need to carve these off very carefully in order to preserve the shape of the foot and boot. So off come the little spats. Right, now we can trim off the decoration from the front and rear of the torso. The reason for this is that the rifleman has got a very elaborate set of buttons and skirt detail, whereas in the Indian Mutiny figure the man is wearing a very plain tunic. So all these buttons must come off the front. And again, we use a sharp blade to trim those off. And you can notice here that I'm using the side of the blade to scrape the surface smooth after the buttons have been cut off. On the rear of the figure, we take off the piping and buttons and the skirt turnbacks. And there we have the body with the detail removed from either side and from the skirt. We need to reduce the protrusion of the coaty skirts at the side, ready to receive the skirts of the tunic. And for that, I'm going to use some plastic sheeting, which I've already marked out, and we're going to cut the plastic sheet. And now we've got two pieces, which are going to act as the skirts of the tunic, and these we're going to stick onto the figure, being very sparing with the cement because the plastic sheet is so thin that too much of the adhesive, which is a solvent, will disintegrate it entirely. So just coat the figure itself and stick on the little piece of plastic sheeting. And you can see it's molded itself nicely to the figure just as if it's an extension of the actual cast piece of plastic. And now the skirts have set nice and firmly. We can just trim them up. Smooth them down a little with the emery board. Blend them into the actual solid skirts of the coatee. That makes a nice full skirted tunic. Now this isn't quite the shape that we need. So we build up the rest of the shape with some of our plastic putty. Pick it up on the scalpel blade and just blend it. The plastic putty is still just sufficiently flexible for it to be able to be worked. And we can, with the point of a cocktail stick, just work the folds in to represent the canvas cover to make a nice smooth surface to accept the paint we're going to coat that little bit of green plastic putty with some liquid plastic. And this brush is on. It's just plastic sprue dissolved in a solvent and it's just necessary to brush it on just as if one was applying paint. And now we're going to fit the belt which we're going to make out of gift ribbon. Just nick the end of the ribbon and tear a strip down. Again, a little touch of adhesive. Apply the end of the ribbon and
and gradually draw it down. Just overlap it and sever it. Now we've got the belt on. And now I'm going to make a little neck curtain to hang down the back of the cap. And for this I'm using a piece of paper of which the grain has been destroyed by crumbling so that it's nice and malleable and can be formed easily. And just measure it up by wrapping the paper around the head and marking on it the base of the cap and the point at which the neck curtain falls on either side away from the head and there's the shape of the neck curtain which is then glued to the side of the head round the cap to the other side and that's stuck nicely to the base of the cap as you can see a nicely draped neck curtain we just push it back slightly fold the wings back and we can coat it with the liquid plastic in order to set it. We just let that dry and it's set in position. Now on this rifle, which is a conversion of the Napoleonic flintlock, the lock has been altered to turn it into a percussion type weapon. And the sling has been added from the same ribbon that we used for the belt and for the straps for the equipment on the figure. And here we can see the rifle being fitted into place, the soldier's hand, and the figure's now ready to be painted. And now here are the two figures after they've been painted. The one on the right, the rifleman from the 95th, and the one on the left is the corporal from the Indian Mutiny.